So today we're talking about the the soft tissue injury in, in orthopedics. Okay, because in orthopedics you have the soft part and the hard part, right? The hard we mean the bone, bone and joint. And the soft tissue injury that's including the muscles, ligament, and dislocation, something like that. So we are talking a common soft tissue injury in orthopedics. Actually, this is more difficult. Most people said. It's more difficult because you cannot see from x-ray. Okay, you need to have a good search, uh, scan skill to do the examinations and diagnosis. Very challenging. So, there's, um, we are talking about the sports injury. This is very common in uh, orthopedics. So, we have contact sport, non-contact sport, augmented speed uh, sport, and collision sports. Okay, so, another part is the uh, overuse injury is not like acute traumatic injury but repetitive injury we call overuse injury and most of our job is the traumatic injury so when you have injury you have wound sometimes you cannot see the wound is an injury inside like sprain of the ligament we use sprain for ligament we use strain for muscles okay? tendon rupture subluxation, dislocation, or fracture. So this is basic, as I told you last time, right? Rice, right, can use for everything. When you have some injury, even the bone, soft tissue injury, you first you have to rest to prevent the further injury. Immobilization is a part of rest, ice, compression, and elevation, right? No heat, no sauna, no massage, okay? Some still do massage, this is wrong. Okay, you can have more breathing inside, have uh, uh, more injury if you try to do manipulation or massage, no alcohol because alcohol make a vessel dilatation of the vessels. So the first part is the common injury to the lower extremities, lower limb. So I'm talking about the very most, most common injury of the knee ligament. Everyone know ACL, right? ACL is very common injury. ACL is the ligament that's in, that is the, in the center of the joint. That is ACL and PCL. Okay? So the direction of the ACL is like, the name is cruciate. ACL means anterior cruciate. Cruciate means like this, right? Cruciate. So the a ACL, you can easily remember, you put your hands into your pocket. Okay? That is the root, that is the direction of the ACL. So at the ACL is attached from medial to lateral, anterior to posterior, like you, like you put your hand in, in the pocket, okay? And the PCL is opposite way, okay? So, well, ACL is very common in, uh, in our Thai people, very common, especially in football, because football is the most popular sport, okay, for Thai people. Basketball, also nowadays badminton is more and more popular. We have, we have, we have heroin, uh, Nong Mei, right? Nong Mei, so very popular. Asia injury in football and badminton is very popular. But in, uh, we have no snow in Thailand, right? So in some country that have snow, ski injury is very common. Ski injury is very common because ski, you play ski, you play ski. So when you you scream, you, your knee, your foot was locked on the floor. So your body can twist. So that, uh, that's the mechanism of ACL injury. Your knee lock and your body twist. Okay? It's about 3% of our athletic injury. So the function of ACL is to keep uh, the tibial translations from the femur. Okay? And that can withstand approximately 400 pounds of force. So mechanism of injury, most common is twisting. Twisting injury, like uh, in football, the game is very fast. Sometimes you need to do six sets and there's some attack. Uh, when you twist the knee, the knee will twist in valgus and rotation. Sometimes they have hyperextension, okay, like this, okay, deformities. Hyperextension is the very, very severe. Sometimes it's not only the ACL. Sometimes you have a PCL also and also the collateral ligament injury. Well, so I show you some of the This is like the twist So this game is really dangerous. We have black B. It's more dangerous because we have no protection. No, black B is more and more dangerous than this. Though, Thomas art. 
rugby team is very famous and everyone in the team is my patient <laughs> you know everyone will have ACL, PCL, shoulder dislocation everything because this is very is the serious injury so you you, you should know this one this is a he's a legend you know this one? you know him? Fan? who is that? His mechanism is look like very trivial. No one attack him, you see? He play and we falling down. Okay, we got a little twist. So at the beginning we, we don't think has serious injury. But this is serious because Ronaldo stopped his life after this injury. He have torn ACL, give torn meniscus. Okay? I show you another famous sport. You should know this one. This is also very famous. Oh, it's not running. So this one is uh, Michael Owen. Michael Owen, the same mechanism of injury. He twists his knee. No one attack him. Okay, and also he has torn ACL, meniscus, and collateral ligament. And he stopped his career after that. Okay. So when you have ACL injury, the first thing you, the patient can feel pop. So every time you need to ask the patient, but in Thailand we didn't poke pop, we call put. Or put, but. But the, the, your, your, your language, maybe you said pop, right? Pop. But Thailand, this, the word is put. Okay? You hear some sound inside the joint. Some, some sound like um, some torn inside the joint. And the patient will have sudden swelling of the knee joint. They come to see you at the emergency room. Okay, if the patient come to see you with short, okay, in sports, you should think about ACL. That's very common. Okay, and you, the patient will have acute hematrosis. That means after the games, he cannot run. Okay, he need to stop and come into emergency room. So at the mid emergency room, you will see that the knee is so swelling like this. And if you do aspiration, you get the blood from the joint. We call hematrosis. Okay? So, up at the beginning, you should not do any, uh, no aggressive rehabilitate, uh, aggressive examination. Just uh, rest, ice, elevation, and compression. And after that, about two weeks, the swelling will be gone and the patient can come back to walk again. Then you follow up the patient at the clinic. And now you can do the examination, okay? Do not do any aggressive examination like this at the beginning, okay? So you can test, you feel that the, the knee is not stable. We call anterior drawer test. You can pull the tibia out because now the ACL is torn. Okay, tibia and, and, and the femur can be separate because there's no ACL uh, attachment. And the patient can feel like, like the knee is unstable. So this is a test we call the pivot shift test. So you walk us internal rotation, start from extension to fraction. About 20 to 30 degree, you can feel that the knee is pop again. Okay. So this is a mechanism. This is we mimic the mechanism of the ACL injury. Okay. So this patient will have the problem. He can run, no problem. He can walk but cannot twist the knee, okay? You cannot go zigzag like that, you cannot, you cannot play anymore. But if you go straight, I mean run, walk in the straight way, no problem. Whenever you want to twist, that the, the, you need a function of the ACL, okay? So the patient will come to see you because he feel that the knee is unstable, okay? And sometimes he's walking and he try to twist the knee falling down, we call giving way. We call this giving way. Okay? And sometimes the patient can show you what's wrong with my knee, doctor. Okay? So, sometimes the patient shows you this is the ACL. You see, the patient show you like this. Okay, this is the, he has unstable knee. Okay? ACL always combined with other ligament or meniscus. Okay, sometimes I said ACL, but many times it's not only ACL. Okay, the MCL is very common because when uh, you twist the knee, the knee is also walkers. Okay, walkers, you have MCL injury also. And sometimes you twist the meniscus in between femur and tibia. 
The meniscus was twist also. Okay. So the meniscus can be torn also. We call unhappy triad. If you have ACL, MCL, and also the medial meniscus. The investigation of choice is MRI. Okay, MRI is investigation of choice because X-ray you cannot see anything. Okay, ultrasound is too deep. You cannot use the ultrasound probe into the joint because it's uh, the femur and tibia obstruct the ultrasound wave. So ACL torn will be like this. Okay, you see normal ACL. But uh, MRI is very, is very expensive okay, in Thailand, so uh, examination is more important. Okay? So you, when your ACL is torn, most of the time the torn is close to the femur. So you can see only the tibia stump, you see it? This, this back, uh, with back signal, this is the ACL. Okay? So this is a long chronic ACL injury. The ACL will be disappear. We call the ACL deficiency. Okay, ACL can be torn, partial torn, and complete torn. Okay, I show you one video. So this is a normal ACL. Okay, the size is of the ACL is is about your little finger. Okay, so it be thick like this and big. You see, this is the ACL, and this is PCL. Okay close to the ACL, it's like cool shape. Okay. So, the way to treat ACL, uh, if the patient getting older, I mean 50 years old, have ACL injury and sedentary lifestyle, no sports, you can conservative and recommend the patient not twist the knee. Okay. Most of the patient can live without ACL. Okay. But if they are still young, very active, uh, we recommend to do the ACL reconstruction, not ACL repair, no ACL repair, because ACL cannot repair. When the ACL is torn, there's only the stump left, you know, you cannot repair like the tendon of the fingers that torn you can repair. So ACL is torn, you need to find the new tendons to repress the ACL, we call the reconstruction, okay. So the common uh, tendon, the graph, we prefer to use the patella tendons or the hamstring. The okay, hamstring, we use the middle hamstring. It was the semi tendinosus and the gasless. Okay. So I show you, uh, this is the hamstring and this is quadriceps. Okay. We can use, there's so many graph joints. In Thailand, we didn't have the outer graph. In European or in US, it's very, com uh, very popular to use the, the graph from the dead people we call our craft. Okay. But in Thailand we still uh, we still use our own craft for auto craft. Okay. But it is becoming more and more popular because sometimes the patient have multiple injury, you have no other craft choice in the body and you cannot take from other people. Okay, you need to take from the dead body. Okay. We call it our craft, but it's very expensive. Very expensive. So this is quadriceps, okay? And also in Thammasat, we propose a new graph choice, we call the pernis longus. You know, where is pernis longus? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, it's in the ankle, okay? You can take the pernis longus. It's in the ankle, and we found that the result is pretty good, okay? We report this new graph choice in the article, international articles, okay? So this is quadriceps tendons, okay? It's quite long. We take the quadriceps with the bone because if you have the bone attachment, uh, they have better uh, chance of healing, okay? Uh, so making the graph longer. Okay, this is quadriceps tendons. Okay, so you take this graft to repress the ACL, okay? So I show you one patient. This is a medical student. They okay, have ACL injury. Okay. Actually, he is the your senior, Miss Doctor Ganbadi. You know him. He's now the extern. So Ganbadi has ACL injury and also has meniscus injury. We're performing the ACL reconstruction. So there will be two holes: one for the cam camera and another post for the for the uh, instrument. So you make a tunnel, okay, at the femur and the tibia. Then you repress the ACL using uh, the tunnel. So the new graph you heal into the tunnel, okay? So this is the graph, then you put the ACL graph into the tunnels, okay? 
this is a graft. So the size of graft is around 10 to 11 millimeters. Okay. And then we fix the proximal and distal with screw. Nowadays we have the absorbable screw so we don't have to take off. It's not metal anymore. So when you go to airport, no problem. No metal inside. Okay. Good. And this is another doctor. She's an um, ophthalmologist. She likes kickboxing. Okay. So one day he kicked her husband and he twists the knee. Okay. So the injured side is not on the on the right, but on the on the left side because when you kick, the foot was on the floor, right? And you twist the body. So the ACL torn not on the this side, it's on the left side. Okay? Because twisting of the knee joint. So after we performing the ACL reconstruction, okay, the same like uh, Ganbadi. Okay, we make a tunnels. So nowadays we are uh, using the mainly the the crop of choice is the this is meniscus. Okay, meniscus is good. You drill the tunnel using the aiming device. Okay, and then pass the graft. Okay, so this is the graft we put into the femur. This is PCL. This is ACL. Okay, and then fix with the screw. You see this screw? White screw, you see here? This is the tip of the screw. Okay. And now she's going to kick again. This is the post of and she's quite happy. Another thing that happened but not in the not in adult, it was happened in the young people. You see the facial plate is still not forced, right? That's mean this is young people. This is the young people because the if you see if you so plate is still open. So this the patient have the ACL avulsion. You see the ACL? ACL is good. But the failure is not in the ACL. It's at the attachment, at insertion. So very common, the ACL pulling the bone and the bone is pulling out of the tibia. Okay, we call the ACL avulsion. So in the past, we fix it with screw. Open the joint and fix screw. But nowadays, we can do atosopic fixation using the, the strong... So this is after the surgery. Young. The patient has the the surgery, the patient the can you have a very stable joint. So, we perform so this is much easier. So you need to do some x-ray in this patient. Because the patient so have to see the patient is really like normal. So after you but the anyway, fragment, you need to do x-ray. Then you repair the rest of the ACL. The thought is okay. And the patient is for okay. extension, stretch the so If the patient has stressed. So the next ligament across the ACL is PCL. Okay. PCL is not happen in sports okay it's different group of patients PCL happen in in not in sports trauma, trauma? what kind of trauma the, to the back of the knee yes trauma to the back of the knee no you're wrong motor yeah motor vehicle accident yeah that's right motor vehicle accident in Thailand, very popular, a, mo a lot of motorcycle accident, right? It's not from the back, it's from the front. Because when you hit the front, the PCL will... The function of PCL is to resist the translation to the back, right? So you have to force from the front, the tibia will sinking down to the back. So the accident will be from the front. Okay, guy? Yes. Yeah, not from the back, from the front, okay? So these are uh, less common than ACL, but in Thammasat, very common. Why? Not Jilalongkorn, not in the city, but in Thammasat, very common because we are. Yeah, we are close to the Pahonyo Tin Road on the highway, and there are a lot of accident. Okay, in the city, very few. They have very few PCL. Okay, so the most of them, they not. Then not only the PCL, they will have this kind of injury. Okay, they have fracture. So if whenever you have fracture of the femur, fracture of the tibia, patella fracture, keep these locations. Whenever you have this kind of injury, should thinking about the PCL. Many 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 times you focus on the fracture because you easy detect, right? You see the X-ray, you see fracture, you fix the fracture, and many times you forget the. PCL. 
This is a real situation. And the patient coming back three months later after the fracture heal. Oh doctor, what's wrong with my knee? My knee is so loose. I cannot I cannot walk. The bone is still nicely, but I cannot walk. So these are the problems. So whenever you fix the bone, I always tell my resident, after you fix the bone, now you can test the knee. But before fixing the bone, you cannot test, right? Because there's a lot of deformity when you test, the fracture move, and the patient has so much pain. So after you fix the bone, don't forget to test the ligament, okay? So these are three mechanisms of the PCL injury, dashboard, okay? And uh, flex on the knee fraction in the ankle plantar fraction. The last one is a hyperextension of the knee. I show you the diagram. This is dashboard, okay, dashboard injury. Very common when you hit the car in the front and there's a force hitting on your knee, okay? This is dashboard injury. Very common in all motorcycle accident, okay? Or even in the car, you have the severe crash injury. Sometimes you have the force attack to your knee joint, okay? And the second mechanism, this is common in, in, um, in football, okay? When they're falling down, the bend the knee and then ankle plantar flexions. So that's a force that push the PCL to the back. The last situation is hyperextension. This is very severe. Hyperextension most of the time, that's only, not only the PCL, they always combine with multiple ligament injury. Okay, we call, this is a mechanism of the PCL injury. So, uh, when you start to do PCL examination, Sometimes you will miss with the ACL because it's the same translation, right? But you need to you need to differentiate. The PCL you should starting from pushing first. Okay? Because when the patient sitting or lying in 90 degree, the gravity will pull the 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 leg down. So if you try to pull, it's wrong. This is false positive. You're thinking is this ACL? But actually it's not. You understand? When you bend the knee 90 degree, the gravity will pull the leg down. So if you start from pulling up, you thought that this is ACL, but actually this is wrong. So you should start by pushing down, pushing down and palpate the step. Okay? Palpate your knee. At your knee, I told you last time, right? The lower pole patella is your knee joint. So palpate your knee, you can feel the step. Okay, we call the tibial femoral stepping. The stepping is about one centimeter. So if you feel this step, that means your knee is in the normal position. Okay, so look at this. Okay, I feel the step first and then I push down. You see? And when you have PCL injury, it will be very, very easy to push. Even the lady like you, you can do. Very, very easy. So whenever you feel that it's easy, that is PCL, okay? Because ACL, you have more force to pull. And some, this is another simple test we call the quadricep active test. Sorry. So you just sit on the patient foot, okay? And ask the patient to bend the knee. Okay, when you bend the knee, the hamstring no, will yes. give you down. No. Okay? Yeah. And ask the patient to kick. Okay, when the patient kick, the tibia will go up because the patella working. Okay, so this is very simple. You sit on the patient foot and ask the patient to bend and kick. Okay, when the patient bend, the hamstring will pull the leg down. So you can see that it's sacking down. Then try to kick, so the tibia will go up. Okay, we call the quadricep active test. So the investigation is X-ray in 90 degree. 90 degree, I, I told you that when you put the knee to 90 degree, the gravity will pull the leg down. So you can see some translation, okay, of the tibia comparing to femur. MRI just go standard, okay, for the PCL. You can see from here, okay, this picture, you see that? This is a PCL torn in the mid substance, okay? And this patient have PCL torn at the tibia insertion, okay? But PCL is totally different from ACL. Uh, the healing potential PCL is different. Your friend is very sleepy. Can you?
Kun. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? You okay? Yes. Okay, P cell is com comparing to the A cell is totally different. P cell healing potential is very good because P cell is staying close to the vascular, healing the process structure, extra synovial. So P cell we can do conservative at the beginning, okay? And the patients patient have less symptom comparing to the ACL. Okay. So this is the way to conservative the PCL. You put the pet, put the breast on. Okay, this is the expensive breast. That's we call the hinge breast, hinge knee breast. And the simple one you can put the cast on. Okay, in full extension, and ask the patient to exercise the quadriceps right, right away. Because if you have put quadriceps, the quadriceps will pull the tibia up. Right. If you have weak quadriceps and strong hamstring, hamstring will pull the tibia down, so the knee joint will be loose. So whenever you have P cell injury, you need to focus on quadriceps. But if you have A cell injury, you should focus hamstring. You know because this is the dynamic stabilizer of the joint. Okay. So we put the breast or cast for six weeks and advise the patient to do quadriceps exercise. Okay. But most of the ACL do not heal. But PCL, if you detect at the early stage, the PCL can be healed. Okay, that so that I told you, you need to not not misdiagnose the PCL. Whenever the patient had fracture, you should treat PCL at the same time. Okay, not three months later, patient come back. Oh, my knee is so loose. So that's too late. No, that's too late. PCL Okay, good. And this patient was neglected also, he had tibial fracture and also he has the... You see his knee is good, so loose. Okay, and the, the tibia can be rotated also. This is a function of the collateral ligament. Okay, he has torn of the LCL and also the completest tendon. Okay, so we call this dial test because the, the knee can dial. It's not, it's not hip joint. Hip joint can die all right, but the knee joint cannot. Okay, this is the dial test. Has a severe P cell injury together with the collateral ligament injury. Okay. The dial test is represent the PLC. PLC is a postolateral complex. Okay, postolateral complex. There is the LCL and popliteus. Okay. So uh, all, all this uh, document, it was, um, I have the yourself study, you have run it from the YouTube. You did not You did see in the schedule, right? In YouTube, you go to my page, my, my channel, you type my name, Bansha Chun Chun Chit, okay, in English. And then you see the, the first page is the interactive learning. So the lecture was already there. Okay, and also the examinations, every examination was in the YouTube. Okay, you can learn by yourself. Okay. Okay, this patient has PCL injury. So you can see that this is a pseudo laxity. What is pseudo laxity? You look at the ACL. Some people didn't know that this is pseudo laxity. They thought that the ACL is not function. So many patients was do the wrong operation. Because PCL, I told you, is healed nicely, right? But sometimes there's still some lax after the healing. I mean the incomplete healing. And when you go in, you see that ACL is lax like this. And many patients was done ACL reconstruction. This is true. And refer to me because they, after surgery, it's failed for sure because you do the wrong operation. PCL injury, you do ACL reconstruction. That's wrong. Okay? This is a pseudo laxity because when the PCL is lax, when you test the ACL will move too much. Okay. So this is a, you see that this is ACL. So we performing. The when the PCL is torn, when you look in the jaw, you cannot see any tear because PCL most of the time was torn in the middle part or the inferior part that heal nicely. So this is the technique we call PCL reconstruction. This is unique for Thammasat, it's a Thammasat technique. So we are very famous for PCL. I was invited to speak about PCL a lot because we have a lot of cases. And this is the unique Thammasat technique we call PCL remnant augmentation. 
we go to the back of the joint okay that really close to the vascular structure okay and then we penetrate the back of the joint there is a septum between it's not like in the front in the back of the joint there is septum so we penetrate from medial side to lateral side and then we working in the back of the joint we make a tunnel okay this look a little bit risky but if you know the trick it will be safe this is very safe okay i find the pcl insertions and then we make a tunnel from the front okay just show you that uh, then you make a tunnel then you pass this suture from tibia to femur okay now we pass the tibia and then to the front then we make another tunnel in the front you see this is bed between ACL and PCL and this is a PCL remnant we mark the point and make a holes in the femur so it's the same concept like ACL reconstruction you need tibia tunnel femoral tunnel then pass the graft okay into the tunnel then fix it okay in the stable position okay because uh, you cannot just repair you need to do reconstruction but PCL is different because PCL there's some part of the ligament is already healed so you should not sacrifice on the ligament you should preserve it and just augment it okay so you pass the graft okay this is a graft you see it's big size put into the knee joint and then you put one part into the tibia okay this part is going into the tibia and this part is going into the femur okay so nowadays the keyhole surgery can do nearly everything I told you last time right except 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 replacement. yeah replacement joy replacement we cannot we can do the bioscopic or keyhole surgery okay so this is the PCL that uh, on the tibial side and then we fit with the screw okay we tension the graft make it strong and then we put the screw in okay so one one my assistant will push it in anterior drawer and put the screw you see this this is the we call the hy hydroxyapatite screw so when the pcl heal already the screw will turn to bone hydroxyapatite is the part of bone right so you see you see that this is the tunnel and the screw was inside okay so this the uh, pcl injury so another another ligament is on your medial lateral side we call it collateral ligament we call mcl and also lcl okay injury to the mcl actually is very common but most of the time the mcl can heal mcl is like pcl it can heal nicely without any surgery so you need to conservative the mcl and pcl at the beginning but acl and lcl these couples is not so good healing is very poor okay so uh, mainly we do conservative for the MCL okay except in some conditions you do you need to do surgery so this patient have vulgar stress positive okay you see that severe vulgar laxity you see severe vulgar laxity and this patient have severe posterior problem also when you test the knee walkers is good one is positive see so this is multiple ligament so this kind of patient we have well, really the, the severe accident like traffic accident motorcycle accident so very common in thailand very com common actually in thamasat hospital so so you need to treat every ligament but first before doing this you need to make sure that the surrounding structure is good especially vascular when you have serious injury you should be thinking about the vascular injury okay until you prove vascular is good you then you can do the surgery uh, the lateral part of the knee joint that is the lcl right also that is the popliteus tendons so this structure is the main structure of the lateral side so your fibula and whenever you have the injury you look at your fat fibula you have some fibula you can see that this is fibula fracture you see in the back hey can you see that can you see fibula fracture 
Yes or no? The first picture. This one. Can you? If you cannot see, come to the front. Can see? Yeah, the tip of the fibula fracture. So this this is the this tip of fibula was the is the attachment of the LCL. Okay. So this also have fibula fracture. We call this arcuate side. Arcuate side is a vulsion of the tip of the fibula. So this is more serious. You see, this is more serious injury. What is that? It's more serious than ACL, PCL. This is the dislocation of the knee joint. Dislocation of the knee joint, right? If you have dislocation, the static stabilizer in the knee joint is totally torn. ACL, PCL, LCL, MCL, sometimes every ligament. If there's four ligament torn, we call KD4. KD1, KD is represent for knee dislocation. KD1 is only one ligament. KD2, two ligament. Three, three ligament, and four is totally gone. Okay. So this is a KD uh, knee dislocations. Uh, first of all, what is the most important thing? I have no. Where's your name? Yes. What's the most important? When the you, resuscitation, yes, save life first, right? When you have multiple ligament injury, you have multiple injury. First is you need to save the life, okay? Make sure that the patient safe. So check check for the lung, abdomen, pelvis, cervical spine, right? So these are the life threatening conditions. So after you save life, now you're looking for the extremities, right? The second of priority is safe limb, right? Safe life, safe limb, safe function. Okay? When you finish your life saving, the next step is to do the limb. Make sure that the limb is safe. In the dislocation, it's a very special dislocation. This is, uh, then we have high list of what injury? Was it? Very good. Public tail. Public tail vessel injury. Okay, knee dislocation almost always associated with the vascular injury. It's more serious than nerve, right? When you have nerve injury, sometimes it's recover. But the vessel injury, vascular injury, if you are too delayed, you need to cut, you need to do amputation. So first of all, you need to check the pulse. Okay, very important. Check the distal neural, neural vascular structure. Check the patient pulse. Okay. If there, there's some problem about the pulsation, comparing to the opposite side always, because sometimes the patient have unstable vital side, they have shock, but pressure is too low, you cannot palpate the pulse. So after resuscitation, you always check the pulse, okay? What's the pulse you, you want to check? Yeah? Poppy there, no, boom, you're wrong. You need to check the distal, right? Dorsalis PDs and yeah, which one is more important? Napon. Yeah, Napon. Posterior tibia, yes. Posterior tibia is the main vessels, okay, of the foot. You need to check the posterior tibia, okay. So, I showed you this uh, this this location is very special. We call this the postolateral dislocation. Okay, the tibia will move to the medial side and the tibia, oh no, femur move to the medial side and the tibia moving to the lateral side and then the, the big gap like this. So this kind of dislocation, why special? Why special amon, amon rat, amon nut, amon rat, amon nut, amon nut, amon nut is female. I'm on nut, right? Why special? I'm on nut. Because this dislocation cannot reduce. This is the irreducible dislocation. So when whenever you see the dislocation like this, 
You see the dimple. You see that dimple? Okay. The skin is dimple down like this. That means the femur is here. Okay. And TV is that part. We call the buttonhole effect. The femur is going out. It's like you go into the button. Button. Buttonhole. Cannot go out, right? This is buttonhole. Okay, it's locked in the soft tissues. So this kind of dislocation cannot reduce. You need to do open surgery. Okay? So keep in mind, when tibia moving to lateral side, femur to medial side, and there's a big gap, there's a dimple, this is irreducible dislocation. Okay? And another thing, if you see that the patient have this deformity at the emergency room, when the patient come to see you, the leg look very normal. Look very normal because it's already reduced by Luong Kan Yu and protecting, you know, before the transfer. These guys, they are very good now. They have the knowledge. They know how to reduce. So when you come to see, see you at the emergency room, you look at the leg, it looks very normal. But if you try to lift the patient up and you see that there is, we call, what is that? Hyperextension, right? Hyperextension or recurvetum. Genu recurvetum, right? So you see this situation, you're thinking about the multiple ligament injury, okay? And you assess the vascular right away, okay? This is common myth because you look, the legs look very normal, and x ray also look normal, okay? Or if you test the knee in zero degree, you found that the patient have very loose joint. At zero degree, you can go walas, walka, stretch test. It's too too much. That means there's not only one ligament. This is multiple ligament. This is the simple clue. Okay? Number one is hyperextension of the knee joint. Or you have severe walkers, walas deformity of the knee joint. Should think about the multiple ligament injury. And this is another patient. What is that? What is that? Shanita. Yes, Shanita. What is that? This one. What's wrong with the knee? Yes, very good. Very good. Why buttonhole? Tell me. Why? Yeah, it look like not look like button. <laughs> you see the dimple here, right? This is a femoral condyle. So this kind of dislocation, they also tending underneath the skin. The skin in this area will be necrosis, will be dead. So you have to delay the soft tissue on the femoral condyle. The soft tissue coverage will be necrosis and dead, okay, if you're too delayed. So this patient was delayed diagnosed, okay, and we need to go in and then I need to open and reduce it back, okay. So this, the it reduces this location. So what's wrong with these patients? What's wrong with this patient? This is not like the button. Three. What's that? PCL. PCL, very good. PCL, very good. And this patient was treated in the wrong way. You see, the knee was not straight, right? There is persistent subluxation. This is iatrogenic. It's from the doctor. Why? Because you put the patient in the cast. When you put the patient in the cast, the knee is unstable and the knee is dislocated in the cast, you know. So when you put the cast on or you put the external support, you should put it straight. You should put it straight. Most people will put it in 30 degree. Most people, I think everywhere. So now I try to encourage them to understand. If you have multiple ligament injury, do not put the breast or cast in 30 degree because when you put in the 30 degree the gravity effect will pull the tibia down okay and the tibia will be subluxated in cast i mean persistent subluxation 
this situation is very difficult. You need to reduce it first and then you do stage to construction. Okay? So this is this condition very common in Thailand, I will tell you. Because the first doctor they have no knowledge. Okay, they always put the patient in class. You will be the first doctor in the future, right? So you should have this knowledge. Okay, do not make this persistent subluxation because yeah, it's my problem. It's really difficult for me to treat. Imaging also uh, important. The MRI is the gold standard okay, to see the ligament and also the meniscus cartilage. So I'll show you one patient. He is 20 years old man. Uh, he has the multiple ligament injury. Okay. The first picture is first picture is what is the first picture? Only first picture. What's that? What's that? First picture? I forget to tell you this is this is the Lachman test for ACL. Okay, ACL you have Lachman test and shear Dower test and pivot shift test. Okay. So the first picture is the top laser test for the ACL. Okay, you put the patient in 30 degree and pull the tibia up. Okay. The second picture was that anterior draw or posterior draw? Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> huh? I look Sat again. Sat again. Sat again. When I push the tibia down, the tibia have sacking. So this is Sat the again. posterior yeah. ball. But you need to test by yourself. You just look at the picture sometimes. You cannot get that feeling. Okay? This is posterior draw. So ACL, PCL, and what is that? What is that? Yes, medial collateral ligament, right? I doing walkers or walker stress? Wow, walkers, very good. Okay, walkers, your hand will be here, like three point bending. You put the hand on the lateral side, that we are testing on the middle side. Okay? So this is ACL, PCL, MCL. Okay? So this patient patient is KD3 M M in the middle side. KD3 M. Okay, interesting. And also this patient have the uh, collateral ligament torn, the middle side, that is MCL, right? This is meniscus. The MCL it was trapped into the joint. <coughs> so, I told you that uh, most of the time, this is ACL, okay? ACL is torn from the tibia, and also the MCL. MCL is torn from the tibia, so this is meniscus. That's female. You see the joint space? It's, too, it's so wide on the middle side, okay? This part is the MCL that's torn and trapped into the joint. See that? And this is my finger. <laughs> because, yeah, this is my finger. Because I need to sweep the MCL out of the joint and then repair it. Okay, you understand? Now, the MCL is out of the joint. I make a small hole, I put my finger in and put it out. <laughs> so this is MCL. So this is a position you do the arthroscopic surgery. So this kind of MCL you cannot be conservative because MCL is completely torn from the tibial side. Okay? So you make a small hole. You see? Right there. And you identify this MCL. You see? MCL is torn. You see? It's torn. This is the subject MCL also the person. It's completely torn. This kind of
Then you can conservative the PCL because I told you PCL you can conservative right you fix the MCL conservative the, uh, the PCL but ACL you don't have to do it now because you open the joint when you do the reconstruction of the ACL together with the MCL the joint will be stiff okay we plan to do it in stage procedures okay first you treat the MCL after three months you see this is after three months the knee joint getting better, it's strong, and then you come back to the ACL PCL. So if your PCL is healed, so you stop just with the ACL PCL. Okay? So that is the way we do the multiple ligament injury. We do a stage procedure. We start from the collateral ligament first. You start from the medial side, lateral side, okay? And then conservative PCL, and coming back for ACL later. Okay, so this patient will coming back for the ACL and PCL later. Uh, so this is a function of the same ACL, patient. You see? The joint is very stable now. You remember at the beginning, the joint is really loose. Okay, focus spread is now negative. Okay, and you see that the ACL PCL is quite good. Okay, I say and I say this is quite good. Okay, sometimes you still have some laxity, but this is quite good. Six months later. So this patient also have multiple ligaments. She was missed. I told you. She was missed at the beginning. She has the uh, PCL and also uh, PLC. She has fractured tibia and also hip dislocation. Okay. This is that dashboard injury. So if the need is cannot reduce, I told you that this is a buttonhole, right? Postural lateral dislocation. We call the buttonhole, there will be vastat medialis, medial capsule, medial meniscus with the obstructor reduction. Okay? This is the same patient. Okay? That you said buttonhole, right? So this patient we need to open because this cannot reduce. And you see the skin is going to death because the color of the skin is getting black. Okay, skin necrosis. So careful because my finger cannot get it. I need, I need to release some one muscle and also the ligament. As I told you, that will be one plus medialis, also medial capsule. I release small medial capsule. Then I push it. Now we can go in. Then we repair the capsule and muscles back okay this is a button okay. this is a patient the same patient okay. okay. is coming back and he is okay so this is the I, I, I show you some patients that uh, that is multiple ligament injury but don't forget the vessels okay whenever you have the knee dislocation or multiple ligament injury the first priority is the vessels, is the vascular. So this patient is the patella problem. Okay, we're moving to the patella problem. What wrong with this patella? <laughs> yeah, it's moved, right? This is left or right knee? Left or right? Huh? Left or right? Left knee? Right knee? Okay, it's ego. The answer is right knee. Very good. Because patella always move to the medial side, lateral side? Lateral side. So that lateral side, that means this is right knee. Okay? You understand? Because patella dislocation never go medial, always go lateral. So I push the patella. See, you see patella when you extend the knee. Okay, it's getting to the lateral. So this is right. Now. Okay, push my finger. Very common in women, young woman. 
Any one of you have pastoral problem? No. You? No, I saw one in the ER. Ah, you saw one. Yeah. When you was. Ah, uh, ER, right? That's right. This a woman, right? Yeah. Yeah, always woman. Okay, woman, always woman, and some medical student also. Okay, so so that this location is always happen in the young. Okay, female is more common than male. It's about two times. Okay. So when is the first time this location? We after we reduce the patella back. Okay, the mechanism is nearly like ACL injury. So sometimes you miss because the symptoms and clinical is very similar. The history is like twist. Okay, but the patella, most the, most people can recognize the deformity. They can say that oh my kneecap is go that way. Okay, but ACL is not right. Oh my kneecap is deformed and I extend the knee is going back. Okay, but then we have the hematrosis in the joint. Okay, you have fluid in the joint and aspiration. You have blood, frank blood in the joint, and uh, reduce after you reduce back. Sometimes you need to strap. Okay, because patella tend to go lateral, so you strap on the medial side, or you can put the breast. This is a special breast we call the patella breast. You lock the kneecap in the middle, in this hole. Okay. But sometimes it doesn't work because most people they have the congenital patella instability. Then we have the, some trivial injury or some minor trauma, the kneecap go out. So most of the people they have bilateral. Okay. You yeah, see these patients? Which side is wrong? Which side is yeah, problem? No, huh? yeah. Left yeah, side, tap. right? The like patella is go out when the cut. patient flex or extend. 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 extend, okay? When the patient flex the knee, the patella will be pulled into the middle of the groove. Okay? But when you go extension, the extension the groove will be very shallow. So if you have no restraint on the video side, the restraint is one ligament. What the name of this ligament? That pull patella to the middle side. What's the name of this ligament? You already learned it when you was medical student year two, right? <laughs> already? <Go> on. <laughs> one knit, one knit, one, one knit, right? One. Ah. What's the name of the ligament? Medial, patello, femoral. Ligament. We call MPFL. MPFL. Medial patello femoral ligament. Okay? It's on the medial side of the patella. You pull the patella medially. Okay? This is a static stabilizer. So this patient patella. I done. You see this patient? For her. This we call this the scar? patella very nice. and apprehension test. Okay? The patient will have so much pain. So you carefully test okay when you do patella gliding at the same time you look at the patient expression okay i show you this patient when i try to push the patella i do very gently okay very gently look the patient i done you see MJFL, the construction for her she 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 this pain, you see the scar very nice most of the uh, injury patient is lady and me. most of them okay, will see? be very beautiful yeah, you yeah, break? Yeah. So, I'm very, I'm very so this patient had bilateral. I already operate her left knee. Yeah, at that time, her left knee has kneecap dislocation, and now she's coming back with the life side. So this is congenital. There's a instability in imbalance of the patella. Okay, always happen in women. If you look at this, you see that the patella should be sitting in the middle. This is a toe clear groove. You understand? You licking from above. This is a kneecap. Kneecap should sitting in the middle, right? In the middle of the toe clear. You understand? So here you see, kneecap is going out, and this side is open. This is medial side. This is lateral side. Okay. So this patient, we need to do the. MPFL reconstruction. We have where's the first layer of the 
cordyceps okay and then we change the axis of the quadriceps moving the quadriceps to the middle side okay trim the graft you understand we pull the quadriceps from the center and then we make it 90 degree 90 degree to the middle side because your patra go lateral right you need to balance by pulling to the middle side see that yes this is the technique from dr goyo from from india but he's now becoming the very famous um, patella surgeons because other technique you need to drill the hole in the patella but this technique you don't have to make a hole so then i make a multiple drill hole here okay find the isometric point of the patella and then we make a tunnel from this okay drill the holes okay make a holes so we make a tunnel in the femur because this is the medial patello femur right that means that one attachment is patella, one attachment is femur. Like you do ACL reconstruction, make a drill hose, and then you make a tunnel, okay, from the kneecap, okay, to the middle side. Then you pull this uh, quadriceps tendon. Quadriceps have three layers. We take only the first layer, the quadriceps, okay, pull this quadriceps into the tunnel okay then fix it okay with screw okay then I put my scope in the camera you check okay and tension then you put the screw in you see that now it's sitting you see sit in the middle now okay because you balance the patella again at the beginning it's not in the center okay so this is the way we do the medial patella femoral ligament reconstruction okay so this is another patient you see both sides both sides most patients we have both sides problem but they um, complain only one side they complaining only one side okay so there's pain when we try to push the patella okay this is preoperative if you look the x-ray we call the merchant wheel or skylight wheel you see that the patella is going to the lateral side and opening on the medial like this so after the reconstruction the patella sitting in the center okay so this patient we performing one side and this side she is uh, she's still okay okay so now we move into the meniscus meniscus injury that's a lot right a lot because soft tissue injury is a big big story and it's becoming very very popular now even in in US or in European most doctor I mean the the male doctor they they like orthopedics because orthopedic is a is a very dynamic you dealing with the technologies you are dealing with sports and also there's a new technique yeah and also it's like physics and mathematics something like that the man like that right you like it you like it yeah I think some you like it and you, you, you want to read the book you want to stay with the book you are internal internal medicine okay it's good for you uh, but you like action the like action you do you like hammer you want to do like a job like this so you being the orthopedic doctor okay so another story is about the meniscus actually I, I, I can say meniscus is more important than ligament okay I told you last time if you have no meniscus that's the end of the knee so in the past we cut a lot of meniscus when I was medical student or even I was a uh, orthopedic resident at that time my my teacher my uh, staff they always cut the meniscus it's easy and the patient feeling better next day the next day patient can run because there's nothing obstruction but in the future five years ten years the knee will turn arthritic change because you have no cushion okay so the meniscus tear is divided into lower tear is number one 
The tear this way we call longitudinal tear. The tear this way we call the horizontal tear. Okay, this way. You, you have uh, upper flap and lower flap. This is horizontal tear. Oblique tear, okay? It will be like this, oblique. It's not transverse. Radial tear will be like this. Okay, radial tear. Okay, like this. Okay, and sometimes like combination or complex tear. <coughs> so which tear you think is the worst? Huh? Which one? Compact, yeah, okay. No, no, no. Let not 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 mention about complex. Yeah? Radio? Why? Very good. Yeah. Very good. Radio tear is the worst. Okay, is the worst. Because when you have radio tear, the meniscus they have like a hoop tension. Okay, hoop tension. So when you have a radio tear, the meniscus split. Okay? And the pressure will go directly on the bone. It's like bone on bone. Okay? So radio tear is the worst. Okay? I like longitudinal tear. And if the tear is very close to the capsule, it's easy for me. Okay? You can easily repair it. Okay? Horizontal tear most of the time is have no symptoms. Okay? So I go one by one. Okay? Then rotate the tibia immediately so the and bring the knee into extension. Of the medicine tear may help your water. You want to repeat this process a couple of times with a different angle of knee flexion open, right? in order to test the whole posterior aspect of the lateral meniscus. In order to test the medial meniscus, bring the knee into full flexion and laterally rotate the tibia. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so mechanism of the meniscus is like you have the same like you have ligament injury. It's always come together and most of the time. Twisting injury. Patient can feel pop, okay? And the main problem is the patient have joint line tenderness. <coughs> or clicking. They always combine with the air cell injury or P cell injury. Okay. And some patients, uh, like elderly patients, they have degeneration of the meniscus. We call the degenerative tear. With the test of fully flexed. Okay. Then, so I show the you this is a way to test the meniscus. You put your finger on the joint line. On the joint line, okay? Joint line is at the lower pole of the patella when you bend the knee 90. Okay? You bend the knee 90. You feel your lower pole patella. So everyone, you have your own knee, right? Yeah. Feel your knee. Not your friends. Your own knee. <laughs> okay? Lower pole of the patella, you feel the joint line, you feel the soft spot. That is the location of your meniscus. Okay? So you want to test the medial meniscus. Put your finger on the medial joint line. Okay? And then you twist the knee, bend. Okay? This, uh, you want to repeat this process a couple of times with a different force, angle yeah, of knee flexion in order to the test the whole meniscus. posterior aspect of the lateral meniscus. If you apply medial, in order to test the medial meniscus, wallas. bring the knee into full flexion like this, and laterally rotate your, the tibia. This is wallace. Okay, you are testing on medial meniscus. Yeah. So, the, the way to do meniscus is like you squeezing your meniscus. You want to squeeze your lateral meniscus, you make walkers. Like, like you... Uh, papier, we can say in... in papier, we can say in, in English, I don't know. Papier. Yeah, that is the testing of the lateral meniscus. You want to test the medial meniscus, you do like figure four. Okay? And squeezing on your medial meniscus. Okay? And another problem is when the meniscus is completely torn, you have the clicking and sometimes it's locking. Many patients have ACL injury and meniscus injury. They, at the beginning, they have only ACL injury. They can live, they can play, and they try to reduce activity or modify activity. But whenever they have meniscus injury, they will run to see you. Because they cannot live when they have meniscus injury. Because the knee will be locked. Okay, I can show you some patients. 
So this patient, he has my old patients. I told him, you have ACL injury, please come to do operation. He is very stubborn. <laughs> okay. And after that, three years later, he come to see me. Oh, doctor, please operate my knee. You see, he has locking. Okay, at the beginning, he had just ACL. You see, I tried to extend his knee. It's so painful. Because at the beginning, ACL is torn. was torn, but the medicine is still good. But the knee is unstable. You see, it keep twisting like this. Okay, and the middle scar will be secondary injury. Okay, and the beginning says good. This is secondary injury, and the patient will come to see you with we call this bucket handle. Yeah, this is tear. Okay, also this patient they have the meniscus tear. So the very simple way is to do the extension. If the patient cannot extend the knee, <coughs> they ex cannot extend the knee. Really painful. And they have, have history of ACL injury. You should thinking about the meniscus torn. Okay, this is unstable meniscus and it's locked. Okay. So this is a locked knee. And sometimes the knee can be this is the longitudinal tear. But it's still okay, you look at this, I use the probe, you see that? The torn is there. Okay. So this message, I like it because this is simple to repair. See, first you make a penetration, okay, to stimulate the breathing, and then we can repair it. Nowadays we have the instrument we call the small fast fix, okay. So this one you pierce into the meniscus. There's a small arrow. So this arrow, <coughs> when you fix it, this arrow we bury it at the capsule, okay. And you tie it now. The meniscus was was repaired and cut it. Okay, it's a very small instrument and work very well. Okay, in the past we didn't have this type of instrument, so the only way is to cut it. But now we have very small instrument that you can go and fix it. So this is another meniscus tear. You see, the torn is have upper and lower flap. What is that? Horizontal tear, okay? Horizontal tear. So this patient have the horizontal tear, you see upper and lower flap. First thing you have to stimulate because you see the breathing? See breathing? Yes, this is very important for the healing. Just repair it, it's not work. So you have to stimulate to get the breathing, okay, to make it fresh and then you can repair it, okay? So this is a horizontal tear. After we stimulate the breathing, then we repair the meniscus back using the same instrument. Okay. So this uh, after you fix it, okay, cross the flap, okay, like that. So another one. This is the I told you this I I had it because this torn is late is radial. That is the uh, meniscus is so comminuted. Okay, there's a gap and the healing you see this, this there's a gap between the meniscus okay and even you try to repair it okay you still have some gap okay and finally this meniscus is difficult to heal because whenever you put the the pressure on the meniscus will be split it's different from the longitudinal tear when you put the pressure on the tear side will getting close Understand? But this is a radio tag. Pressure on is split like this. Okay. So radio tag is the worst prognosis comparing to other tears. And this one have a lock meniscus. You see, this meniscus is we call bucket handle. And this is the patient that, that I show you, right? It has a meniscus tear, also ACL injury. The meniscus is very stubborn. Even I try to repair it, it cannot getting reduced. Because this is a chronic dislocation, like a displacement of the meniscus. Okay. And another one is flap. This this meniscus cannot repair because very tiny fragment. You need to shave it and cut it away. Okay. So I show you another patient. This is he. He's very active. Uh, he's just 19 years old. He come to see me because of knee pain. And looking the MRI, you see that this is the like you have two PCL. We call double PCL side. 
this first one this black shadow is PCL and this part is not PCL this is meniscus when the meniscus lock that means it's in the middle right and this meniscus cannot reduce you see I try to push the meniscus back very difficult very difficult because this is a chronic many months and really difficult to reduce but anyway he's just 19 years old anyway I, I try to repair the meniscus for him okay after I go 10 stitches now the meniscus is getting easier to reduce okay and finally we can reduce all the meniscus back then we make a small hole to tie the, the knot okay and now he can go to run again okay he's a very active sport man okay. so he said you set his knee if you cut this meniscus it's easy the patient feel very good but five years later the joint will be narrow and arthritic change okay so I, I will discuss with the patient always when you have meniscus because sometimes you fail because of the meniscus job is not easy meniscus is really in the very narrow joint very, very narrow narrow space so I tell him if the if it's fail don't sue me okay I, I try my best I want to save your knee I have good willing so please understand okay every patient understand because you save the meniscus you win okay. If you have two ACL, ACL tear, you can repress because you have many guard choices, right? But meniscus, you have only one meniscus. Okay? Try to save the meniscus. Okay, another one is uh, common in children. Okay, we call the pain at the tubercle. This patient will come to see you with the kneeling pain. The patient cannot kneel on the floor. And they have the uh, prominence of the tibia tubercle. Yeah, this is the Oscut Schlatter lesion, Oscut Schlatter disease. They have pain at the tubercle. When you see the X-ray, there will be the uh, like fragmentation at the tibial tubercle. Okay, we call Oscut Schlatter disease. <coughs> uh, this part is the apophysis. What is apophysis? What's your name? You are in the last, the last one in the back. Yes, Chuta. Isuta. What is apophysis? Do you know? Do you know epiphysis? Do you know epiphysis? Yes. What is apophysis? Huh? Yeah, apophysis is epiphysis. But the special thing is it's the traction epiphysis. There is attachment of the ligament or tendon at its epiphysis. We change the name from epiphysis to apophysis. Understand? So the bony prominence, okay, most of the bony prominence is the attachment, right? Like medial picondyle, lateral picondyle, tibial tubercle. So this took this prominence we call traction epiphysis or apophysis. Okay. So this is like apophysis uh, injury, we call apophysitis, apophysitis. So the, the way to reduce the, the pressure, this, this patient always have the pain at the tubercle. You can protect and you can put the sprint, like a tennis elbow sprint, to protect the patella tendons, uh, to, to prevent pulling too much. Another situation is the ankle. Ankle injury very common. Okay, it's the most common ankle injury, ankle sprain. The most common uh, mechanism of injury is inversion or eversion. Inversion. I think one of you should have ankle injury. Yes. Some more. Some more. When you have pain, you have pain on the medial side or lateral side. Lateral. Huh? Lateral. You have medial. Sure? Oh, medial side. Medial side is rare. <laughs> lateral? Yeah. Was it lateral? And how about your ankle now? It's okay? It's okay? Like normal? Yeah. How about you, medial side? It's okay? 
Huh? It hurts when I run. Oh yeah, hurts sometimes, right? When you run. Okay, the middle side is which ligament on the middle side? On the middle side? Del? Del what? Del toy. Del toy on the middle side. Okay. On the lateral side, there is three ligaments. Right? The most common lateral ligament injury is the is the anterior talo fibula ligament. ATFL. Okay, ATFL is the most common injury. So when you twist your ankle, you have pain in this area. You see this finger? This point. Okay, this is the point of the ATFL, anterior talo fibular ligament. Okay? And sometimes you have uh, so much swelling. So on the medial side, okay? Do you have pain on the middle side? This is the deltoid ligament. Okay, and you have pain underneath the malleolus. And this is the deltoid. Sometimes the deltoid ligament is flipped into the joint like MCL, I told you. Okay, so this patient has persistent pain, so we need to go scope the ankle joint. We can go every joint, right? Ankle joint also, <laughs> even it's very small. We can go in the joint and then we clean the joint, okay? So it's only 5%, 5 to 10% on the medial side. 90% on the lateral side, okay? And most of them is grade 1 or grade 2. And you can and do conservative treatment, very successful. So this is a ligament on the lateral side. This is fibula, okay? Fibula, the anterior part is the anterior talo fibula ligament. It's most common injury. The inferior one we call calcaneofibular ligament. This is very strong, and there's a posterior talofibular ligament. It's like one, two, three, okay, three ligament. On the medial side, there is the uh, deltoid, deltoid ligament, really big and fan shaped. When they do it, they have fan shape. They call deltoid, like your deltoid muscles, deltoid ligament. Okay. Good. And also you have the inter, uh, between the fibula and the tibia, we call interosseous ligament. Okay, interosseous ligament, or we call the syndesmosis. You remember? Syndesmosis is the ligament between the tibia and fibula. So this is the test when you have the chronic ankle instability. We call the anterior drawer test. You see this first figure? I fixed the tibia, okay, and uh, you hold the calcaneus, bend the ankle about 10 degrees, and then do anterior translation. The name is like the knee ACL, okay, anterior drawer test. Because the, it's exactly the same. You fix proximal part, and then you pull the distal part, okay? So this patient have chronic uh, ankle injury. Yeah, she is a professional uh, athlete. And also this one. So if you have translation more than one centimeter, that means your ankle translation uh, positive, anterior double positive. Like this, okay. Uh, X-ray can help because X-ray you can measure. If you just pull, you just have the feeling, right? But if you have X-ray, you can document how, how far. Okay, another thing is a Tala tilt test. Okay, the Tala tilt test, you test the calcaneal fibular ligament. Anterior, anterior drawer test, you're testing the anterior talo fibular ligament, ATFL. Tala tilt test, you are testing the calcaneal fibular ligament, CFL. Okay. Good. If you have tilt more than 15 degree, that means you have the calcaneal fibular ligament injury. So we div divide this ankle injury into three grades, grade one, two, and three, okay? Grade one, the patient will have no swelling, just tender, yet like it's micro tear. I think most of you will have just ankle grade one, okay? You will have some pain, limping for a few days, and you can back again. How many days you limping? You. Uh, two, three days. Two, three days, that should be grade one. Okay, how about you? Guy, one week. Okay, maybe grade one or two. Okay, 
So you have the grade two, you may have my moderate swelling, tenderness. This is a partial tear of the ligament. The grade three, you have a marked swelling, ecchymosis, marked tenderness. This is a complete tear of the ligament. But even one, two, three, we start from conservative treatment. Okay. The way to do that is first is rice, right? Okay, ice, rest, ice, compression, elevations. Okay, you can put this <coughs> strap. Okay, we call chip knee strap. Or you can put the brace or support. Or even grade three. Grade three, we recommend to put the boot. Okay, the boot like this. It's like Robocop. Okay, With the boot. We call the air cast. Okay, air cast boot. So you can walk, but this is more protection. Okay, we skip to the <coughs> hip joint. Hip joint. <coughs> Very important, the hip joint. So hip joint, uh, dislocation or hip dislocation is really common. And I think most of all of you should know the details about this. Okay? Hip dislocation, there is anterior dislocation and posterior dislocation. Okay? What is more common? Posterior. Huh? Posterior. Okay, so the mechanism injury, okay, like I show you, the PCL injury, also dashboard, right? Hip dislocation, also dashboard. Okay, patella fracture, dashboard injury, right? And also some tibia, femur fracture, sometimes the injury is happen at the knee joint. So the Hip dislocation is very special. When you see the patient at the emergency room coming to this, you see this position. This position is a combination with first is flexion and rotation. yeah, internal rotation and adduction. Okay, this is a classic pictures of the hip dislocation. If you see this position, that means this is a hip dislocation and the patient cannot move even you try to move the patient so painful when you look at the x-ray it will be like this okay the head will be internal rotated how can you know it's internal rotated how can you know that this hip is internal rotated the angle of the the relative of the knee points mm -hmm. the knee points inwards it's more like it's internal. but you didn't see the knee you just see the hip Huh? Yeah, you break the Shenton line, right? This dislocation. What else? Huh? Compare the other side. You see this side, you see the lesser gather to blossom, right? How about this side? You didn't see what? Huh? You didn't see what? Where is this? Where is this? Yeah, it's, gone. it's gone. Where is lesser tuberosity? It's in the front or in the back? It's in the back. Okay? If you didn't see the lesser tuberosity, that means your hip is interlocation, right? If you see the lesser tuberosity, obviously, that means you do external rotation. Okay? So the key is you're looking at your lesser tuberosity. If you see the lesser tuberosity, that means the hip is external rotation. Okay, you, that you often see in the patient that have fracture of the hip, neck fracture, intertocantilic fracture. You will see the lesser tuberosity, right? But in hip dislocation, you didn't see the lesser tuberosity because the lesser tuberosity is churn. Okay, internal rotation. You didn't see it. Okay, you break the Shenton line, very good, okay? And every time you should look at the head also. Sometimes it's not just the dislocation, it's a fracture dislocation. Sometimes the head was split, and sometimes the socket, I mean the acetabulum, also broken, okay? Good. So this is a classic hip dislocation. What structure that you have to be considered or exam every time? When you have fracture dislocation, you should looking for yes, right. What neurovascular structure that you need to focus? Huh? For the posterior hip dislocation, which structure? 
Very good. Sciatic nerve. How can you test the sciatic nerve? Hmm? <laughs> Stead leg lifting test. <laughs> I will kick you. <laughs> the hip is too dislocated. You cannot lift up. The patient is painful. No, you cannot. Knee flexion. Huh? Knee flexion. So sciatic nerve, there's two parts, right? The peroneal part and the tibial part. Which part will be injured or both? Huh? No. Only one. Tibial. Wrong. <laughs> peroneal part. So peroneal part injury, what happened? Good drop. That's right. Good drop. So, don't forget to shake the food. So, tibial part is in half because the patient still can be some infections but cannot do dorsiflexion of the ankle. That means the sciatic nerve pulse. Okay? Every time you need to shake because if you miss this condition and you don't know that it's happened before or after the reduction, very important. Because if it happened after the reduction, hip dislocation, you didn't take the note. The patient already have foot drop. You didn't take the note, okay? And the surgeon go in and reduce the hip. Oh, they they check the ankle again. Oh, you have foot drop. Before, after. If it happened after, you need to go in and that means the nerve was trapped into the joint. You know, that's serious. You need to open the hip and take the nerve out, you know? But if you already take the note that the foot is already dropped at the beginning, so after reduction, no problem, it's still dropped, right? You wait some time for the recovery. Understand? So this is very important. Every time you have dislocation, fracture, you should take the note, the new lower stress structure is good or not, okay? So another dislocation, we call the entry dislocation, so it's, the, it's opposite, if you can remember the posterior. Anterior is opposite. So the anterior, the posterior is flexion, adduction, ex, uh, internal rotation. So anterior will be? Uh, abduction, external rotation. Okay? Abduction, external rotation. Like this. Okay, this is a posterior dislocation. So the mechanism of injury is like this, okay? Most of the cases is the big bite, big bite accident. What's the difference between big bite and the, and the simple motorcycle accident? Big bite, you sit? You show me how you sit? Stand up, stand up, stand up. Show me how you sit. No, 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 no. Show your friends. The woman cannot understand. <laughs> come up, come up. Uh-huh. Yes. Guy, guy. Yes. Yeah, show show just. I don't know. Big bite, big bite. I'm a small person. Oh wait, that's huh? like a holiday or like a sports. Big bite you can add that or not? No, you have you, 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 you right? You external rotate. Oh. Yeah, like that. Show him here. <laughs> Guy. Oh. Yeah. Oh. For learning purpose, yes. Show them. No, no, no. Turn that way. Yeah, right? You abduct. So the force will not hit in the front of your knee. Okay? It's going to the middle side. So the force is coming from middle side and the leg will be external rotate okay so that's why it's dislocated anteriorly okay it's very really rare very really rare so the way to reduce there's no, so many ways i will give you just remember one or two that's enough okay uh, this is the most um popular alice method okay alice method so after you check the sciatic nerve x-ray already you did this reduction at the emergency room, right or wrong? Emergency room? Yes or no? 
No. This car, this location, you should reduce it in the operating theater, not emergency room. It's not like shoulder dislocation, elbow dislocation, knee dislocation. You can do it at the emergency room, but the hip dislocation you should perform in the operating theater. Okay, because this is a deep joint and the muscles around the hip is very strong. If you try to manipulate, it's too cruel, I think. And also you cannot test and you will fail because the patient not relax. Okay, number one, when you try to do reduction, the patient must be relaxed and also no pain. Okay, so you fix the pelvis and what assistant? Hold the leg and try to pull up. Okay, like that. Axial loading. The mechanism is axial loading, right? So the way to reverse is to pull it up. Okay, pull it up. Okay, fix the pelvis. Because if you didn't fix the pelvis, the whole body will be pulled, right? So this is what we call the Alice maneuvers. And there's so many, I just show you that put the hip and put the okay to assistant, put it like that, is put it like Falcon. Okay, a, a little bit fancy, but I think it's not that easy. I never tried this. This is Baltimore, East Baltimore, lift maneuver, okay? Be careful, I, I not try to do that because this is dangerous. Because when you try to make a manipulation of the hip rotation, the problem is fracture. Fracture. So I think nowadays no one do that. Be careful. The, the one that's very really popular now is the Alice. You just traction no manipulation because the serious complication is a fracture when you try to rotate okay that will be neck fracture or head fracture another way is to do the gravity technique we call the stimson okay stimson put the patient on the table at the edge of the table and push push down using the gravity okay the stimson stimson is always prone even in the shoulder Okay, they do the same like this. Okay, this is the another, this is my resident. This is more than 10 years ago. Okay, we call this Lepkowitz technique. Okay, Lepkowitz, you put the patient leg on your own leg. Okay, and then you use this like falcon. Understand? And then you push on the patient ankle. Okay, it's easier because you use your knee, also your hand to lever. Okay, to lift it up. And assistant, push on the pelvis. Okay. And slowly. Okay. Then you lift up your knee at the same time. See? Click. It is now. Okay. And then you test the stability. The way to test the stability is to bend the knee to 70 degree, 70 degree. Okay, this again show you. Okay, after you, but you do need to do it gentle, not aggressive pulling. Gentle, relax. Okay, like that. Okay, and assistant can feel. Okay, bend the knee to 90 degree, 70 degree, to 90 degree, and then you make an axial loading, gentle. Axial loading, okay. Axial loading. If the hip is unstable, it will dislocate again. Okay, by just by gravity. The unstable hip most most of the time when you reduce the hip back, it will be very stable because hip joint is special. Hip joint is a very deep bone socket joint. It's not like shoulder joint. Shoulder joint like this, right? Very shallow socket. Okay, shallow can stay as uh, shoulder have surrounding capsule. So the important is on the capsule. But the hip joint, you see? Hip joint, really deep. Okay? And the socket is so deep. So after you reduce the hip, it's stable. So the stability is coming from the is from, from the bone. So if there's no bone fracture, most of the time it will be very stable. But after you test as it's unstable, that's mean that should be something like the the socket have some fracture like acetabular fracture okay 
or you have something obstruct inside like you have small fragment obstruct in the joint so the the, the the hip will be unstable okay so after that you uh, ask the patient not to not to be in this uh, risky position fraction adduction internal rotation okay you can allow the patient to put partial weight bearing okay and observe for the avascular necrosis okay you know hip dislocation you have some chance of avascular necrosis so you should reduce the hip as soon as possible okay if you delay more than six hours eight hours you have some chance of avascular necrosis okay? so that is the emergency orthopedic conditions so we are finished our lower extremity now we're going up to the upper extremities so the uh, very common is the shoulder, shoulder injury. for the real gang so actually, uh, real the shoulder dislocation is the, the most common as we see where the injury is going dislocation came. is most common oh this is where it's going to come and posterior dislocation oh, multidirectional well, is uh, I think that's oh the broken his collarbone or he's popped his shoulder out the back so we need why it's a nasty fall so oh dear me instability yeah, just the dislocation oh that does not look good at all dislocation of the shoulder joint so the patient will come well 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 Okay. Oh. It's going in abduction, external rotation. So this is the injury to the shoulder joint for the entry dislocation. You go abduct and external rotations, so the shoulder will go out in the front. Okay, but this position, like dashboard, like dashboard, hitting. This is like knee joint. Okay, abduction and push. The shoulder will go out the back. Okay, this is like entry dislocation of the hip right, abduct external rotation and there's some force. Okay. So when the patient come to see you at the emergency room, you can see this, right? You can see the prominence, dominant of the acromion. Okay? Not the AC joint, you should differentiate. It's not the same. Okay. If you have prominence of the acromion, you have frac deltoid. You can put the ruler from the acromion to the lateral e or uh, epicondyle, totally flat. Because you look at this picture, you see, shoulder is going to medial. That's why you can put the ruler, you see, you can put the ruler here. Understand? Because the shoulder is going <coughs> inside. So you can put the straight ruler on the lateral acromion. Okay? What's nerve you have, you need to check Accentory. for the yes? How can you check the axillary nerve? Uh, Are you sure? Yeah. Like he said, stand leg lasting test <laughs> in the hip dislocation. Can you check like this? <laughs> no, you should thinking before you. Yes. Sensation. Sensation where? The deltoid. Deltoid. Where is the deltoid? No, not here. Yes, here at the deltoid insertion. Okay, you. Where is your deltoid insertion, everyone? Yeah, your deltoid insertion is here. Okay, this is deltoid muscles. This is the deltoid insertion. So the patient will have numbness at the deltoid insertion. It's a very small area, like a small coil. So you didn't test, the patient cannot tell you because the patient will not know that they have numbness. You know, because it's a very small area. Okay, test the sensation at the deltoid insertion. I, I can say it's here. It's here at the deltoid insertion. Okay. So, what is that? Okay, this is posterior dislocation. Actually, one of your friends can do this. But he's shy. One of your friends can do this. Huh? It's not you. No. Guy? No. <laughs> I can show, I can show later. Okay. Guy have the problem of the posture. He can do like this. I, I, I test his shoulder last time. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> So that is not not a problem because this is a subluxation. Your shoulder also have entry subluxation. Guy Cohen, you have the posterior subluxation. Okay. So 
This is a normal laxity. Whenever, whenever you have no problem, we didn't say this the pathology. Okay, we saw this the process of relaxation, and this is the inferior dislocation. This is a very serious because what is at the axillary area? Brachial plexus. So this kind of in of injury or inferior dislocation is the most serious because you have brachial plexus at the axillary area. Okay, where the shoulder getting in. Okay. So this is injury dislocation. So what's wrong with this this shoulder? <coughs> so these patients, just yesterday, you can read Thai, right? Ajahn Krab, Nong Thi Fa Phuk Sa Krab, Nong Khao Miss, Posterior Shoulder Dislocation, one year. So this is ha this happened in the. Five star private hospital. So, do you know what's wrong with his shoulder? He is orthopedic surgeon, but even orthopedic surgeon can miss this kind of this dislocation. If you look carefully, okay, you see this shoulder. You see the joint. Is it very narrow? You think it's really narrow? <coughs> yes, right? It's really narrow. That's not normal. The patient's still young. Okay? You see this picture? You see? You see the gap here? You see? This is not normal. Because you should see the equal joint space, right? We call this a vacant glenoid sign. And when you see the MRI, you can see that some part of the shoulder is not in the socket. This is the socket. This is the socket. 50% of the head is getting out of the socket. You know, this is the lock dislocation, posterior dislocation. Okay, so you have to be very careful. That this is very common miss. Even orthopedic surgeons, if they didn't have um, enough experience, they can miss this type of dislocation. Okay, and also the patient have the subscapularis torn also. Okay. Okay, so I need to fix this for him. Maybe tomorrow. Okay, this patient may have the numbness. And the deltoid insertion, you see here, this is the deltoid insertion. So you need to test the axial nerve every time. <coughs> and this patient has this location and also she has, what happened? Okay, she has many nerve injury, she has axial nerve injury, she has wrist drop. That mean is that the multiple nerve is a brachial plexus injury. Okay. Sometimes it's not just actually no. Okay, if the injury is more severe, you can have the Baker pestus injury also. Okay, so before you reduce the shoulder or the hip, every time you need to check the nerve. Okay, check and record. Very important. So there's so many ways to reduce the shoulder. Okay, the first way we call hippocampus. You like it? You like it? What is that? It's not fingers. The finger is too short. The short finger is not finger. It foot. It's tall. It's not finger. Okay. So you put the foot in the brachial plexus and pull. We call this hippocampus. The name is very old. So it should stop. Okay. Nowadays we 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 not recommend to do this. Okay. So I got this video from YouTube. Yeah, not so much. You put something in the mouth. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. And then yeah, just some knowledge. She put some oh. in the okay, here, but actually that's a food okay, to protect the to protect yeah. the plexus. Okay, but it's too risky because your foot is in the brachial plexus. When you try to pull, you can have brachial plexus injury. Okay. So I recommend you to do this way. Okay. Uh, we call muse technique. Okay, you slowly abduct the shoulder and then turn 
the thumb. Okay, and slowly external rotation. At the same time, abduction, external rotation. Okay, and go back this way. We call this duka side, right? Duka. G D U G A R duka side. If the patient can do this way, that means the shoulder is already reduced. Because the shoulder dislocation, patient will come to see you in abduction, external rotation, right? Like the hip dislocation, the same position. Abduct, external rotation. So you slowly abduct, and at the same time, external rotations. Okay, this way. I show you again. So at the same time, you try to talk to the patient because the patient will relax. Okay? And you can see that the patient, but most of the time, you don't have to. But if the patient has pain, you should see that the patient with valium or pethidine, okay? Now this was already reduced, okay? I slowly go down, okay? If the patient can go down this, that means the shoulder was reduced, okay? Okay, this we call the Mills technique. You can make a kosher technique, okay? Kosher, you start from external rotation, abduction, adduction, internal rotation, but Nowadays we didn't recommend because this like the the rotation you need to manipulate like the hip. So some there's some report of the fracture of the proximal humerus. So we didn't recommend to do this. Okay. And this is the same Stimson, right? The same name, Stimson. Stimson for the hip they put the patient on the edge of the table and pulling down. For the shoulder it's the same, okay? Putting down like this, Stimson, scapular manipulation technique. Okay, I forget one, one, one more technique that is very popular. We call the traction counter traction. I skip this slide. You can see in um, in YouTube. Okay, you write traction counter traction. Okay, this is really really common. I, I forget to put this slide for you. Traction counter traction. Okay. So the way to do traction, counter traction, you have uh, one assistant, okay? You have one towel here, pull this way, pull this way, okay? Your assistant pull this, and you pull this, okay? And see that the patient in 45 degrees, just traction, slowly traction, and the shoulder will be reduced, okay? So after the reduction, you put the patient in sling, uh, in adduction internal rotation, okay, and there's uh, one report they recommend to put the patient in this position, but only one report. They found that this position the patient had less chance of dislocation, and then you ask the patient to do rehabilitation to prevent the stiffness, okay, isometric exercise and gentry rehabilitation, but anyway. The patient still have the incidence of dislocation. So when the patient have shoulder dislocation, you need to discuss with the patient that they have the chance of re-dislocation. You know how many percent? You guess? Huh? 50? How about you? No. Higher. Huh? Higher. It depends on the age. If you are less than 20, the incident is nearly 55, 95 percent, 95 to 99 percent. So very high, very very high. If you are still active, you are still young. You have high chance of dislocation. Okay. But anyway, we still waiting for the second dislocation to operate. We did operate the patient the first time dislocation. But the patient with the pa uh, you are older, you have more than 40, the incident is lower, much lower. Okay. So this patient will come to see you with the recurrent dislocation. This is a way to test, okay? You do the abduction, external rotations, and the patient will feel the shoulder is going to pop out in so much pain. We call the anterior apprehension test. So this picture, this patient have posterior dislocations. This test we call the posterior apprehension test. You feel, see the patient first. I push the elbow like dashboard. Okay, the patient has pain and feel like it's going out. 
and the last situation we call the multi-directional okay uh, this location so this patient we have the uncontrolled Okay, no problem, view we'll later. <laughs> so this is anterior, this is posterior. Okay. So the test is I call you anterior this anterior apprehension test, posterior apprehension test, and uh, we call jerk. Jerk test is like uh, I show you the posterior uh, dislocation, you make like <coughs> fraction adduction and then abduction, you, you feel the jerk. Okay. And the last one, this is the, uh, we call the Kim test to assess the postal inferior. Maybe too complicated for you. And the next thing you need to add, you add the laxity. Okay, you see this patient have very really lax joint. We call the sulcus sign. You pull the arm down and you can see the gap. That is the laxity. We call sulcus sign. Hyperabduction test, you check the shoulder abduction. If it can go more than 95%, you fix the shoulder, this is a hyperabduction test. Okay? Like, like I showed you last time, guy or someone, I showed you in the front, right? If they fix the scapula, you cannot go more, right? Because you, I fix your scapula toxic. And also you need to check the general line laxity. This patient have very loose joint, okay? We call the Biton score. Okay. Let's go next for the x-ray. X-ray and also the CT scan to see some bone loss. Because if you have multiple dislocations, you get some bone loss because of the multiple dislocation. And in case for surgery, if you have multiple dislocation, fail conservative treatment. You need to jump for surgery. Okay, we call this a TU supply position we publish in the international journal. This is very special position for, for Thomasat. Yeah, it's easy, simple, and very uh, easy to do operation. So before surgery, you need to check the stability of the joint. Okay? Check that the sh uh, knee, uh, shoulder move anteriorly, posteriorly. So this patient has posterior dislocation. This patient has anterior dislocation. So the way to do that, we call the arthroscopic uh, label repair or bank card repair so it's torn at the labrum okay so you put the camera in and then you put the suture anchor and you repair the labrum back okay. so this patient have the torn of the shoulder uh, capsule and they have the label tear I fix the labrum okay Put the anchor in and repair the labrum. Yes. All the labrum, all the labrum is. You forget the anatomy, right? This is a labrum surrounding the grinoid. Okay, that is the elevation of the capsule. The thick, this thick capsule is act like the socket because the shoulder, the socket is so narrow, is so shallow, right? So we build up, they build up the surrounding around around the grinoid. They build up like a thick, a thick capsule. This we call labrum. Understand? So the way to do that is you fix this labrum, this torn labrum, right? You fix this labrum back. Well, we do it do it like arthroscopic. You need to put the anchor into the bone because labrum cannot fix to the bone. You need some anchor suture. Okay, to fix this back to the bone. Okay. So another patient, this is the multiple dislocation. Actually, he's a famous movie star, but I will not tell you who is he. Yeah. So he has a big uh, torn, and also he had the dislocation, and also the head is is uh, some bone loss because he had more than ten times dislocations. So if you have more than the more you have this location, the more injury you have, right? So I need to go in and I fix his labrum, okay? 
put the anchor and then I repair this back. Okay, this is torn from the bone. Okay, and finally you get this back. See? See, you block your motions. Okay, and repair this back. Now he's getting the So this is a multiple dislocation you see in the This is because of the collision. Okay, like only that cause the impact in the bone. You can dislocate the joint easily, right? So this operation you don't have to touch. Understand? If you try to do anything with this patient, you will fail. So these are the contradictions for surgery. Okay, keep in mind. You just dealing with the traumatic dislocation. Okay? Good. And also this patient, she has the unstable joint. Okay? And also she has she cannot control her shoulder. So at the beginning someone thought that she has some seizure. Okay? But actually no, this is the multiple uh, multidirectional instability. Okay, we call involuntary dislocation. This is congenital, okay? So we uh, we try conservative in this patient, except in some situation like con in control, uncontrolled dislocation like this patient, I need to do the surgery for her. But you need to make a new labrum or the new labrum for her, okay? Making like a bump, okay, like this to in 360 around the shoulder to prevent dislocation. Okay, this is a very difficult job, okay? So now she's happy. She's not no more dislocation, you see? Like a bump around the crinoid. Okay? So another situation is the top at the 12 o'clock position. The labrum at the 12 o'clock position is the bicep. You remember? I show you again to the first picture. This picture. You look at the labrum. See? At the 12 o'clock position is the bicep origin. It's a long head bicep. Okay, long head bicep is here. So if the torn at the 12 o'clock position or the at the long head bicep insertion, we call this slap lesion. Slap lesion means anterior labral. Uh, sorry, superior labral, anterior posterior lesion. This one. Superior labral anterior posterior lesion was described by Schneider. This always happened in overhead athlete. So in Thailand, was this really popular? Volleyball. volleyball, yeah, volleyball. So I have many volleyball patients, okay, that have the slap lesion. So it's same like slap, right? Slap. <laughs> that is slap lesion. Okay, you can easily understand, uh, remember. So there's a will be torn of the bicep root. Okay, so the patient we have pain and uh, has some weak pain in the shoulder. I skip this. Skip this. This is too so complicated for you. So the test to do slap is you make O'Brien test. Lift up internal rotations. Okay, and push like that. The patient we have pain. I show you again. So this is a test for slap. Okay, lift up this way and thumb down. Do you remember? Super spinatus, you do like this, right? And O'Brien test, you do like this. This is slap test, O'Brien test. Okay, another test is a compression rotation test. Okay. So that to be torn. You need to use the MRI with arthrogram. That means you need to inject the dye into the joint also. Sometimes there's a leakage of the fluid into the uh, area of the nerve. This nerve is the spine, is the suprascapular nerve called the spinal pinoid notch. This patient will have weakness of the supraspinatus and also the infraspinatus because of the cyst that's coming from the lesion from the torn side. Okay? And compressed on the nerve. Okay, this patient have the weakness of external rotation, you see? Yeah, they have weakness. So this is the cyst coming from the slab. Okay. This patient have the torn labrum, like that, you see? Torn is from the 12 o'clock positions from the bicep, extend to the back. Okay. And we need to fix it. This one is a professional volleyball player. Okay. She has slap lesion and she need to stop 
playing because uh, she has no much, so much pain. She cannot play because whenever she try to to hit the ball, she has so much pain. You see that? It's torn like that. And, th and this is the biceps, long head biceps. Okay. So we fix this lap lesions, and now she is uh, going back to play. Yeah, she is the national volleyball player. Okay. And at that time, she has so much pain, and I fix her slap lesions. Okay. Good. After that, she has a two minutes and four rehabilitation to go back to play. Okay. And she start to play at uh, seven, eight months, and she got the gold medal in Sea Games. Yeah. So another slap is happening. This is badminton prayer. Okay, when you 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 make an abduction, external rotation, you will deficit internal rotation. Okay, this patient have the internal rotation deficit. We call the internal impingement. Okay, that's happened in the patient with slap lesion. Another injury for sport is bench press. Any one of you do bench press? You have to be careful. I will tell you. Please stop. Look at this. Okay? See? <laughs> See? <laughs> you can be die. You serious? See? And of this patient is the bend press injury. The first patients they have the bend press injury, they have the pectoris major rupture. Okay? This is the first patients. The second patients we have the bicep tendon rupture, also the label tear. You see, bicep is torn. I need to fix his bicep. Not only the bicep, he also have this location of the shoulder joint. Okay, because bend press will go down, right? Your shoulder will go abduction, external rotation. Okay, when you go into, when I go into the joint, we found that the labrum was torn. So I need to fix his labrum. Okay, at the same time, after I fix the labrum. I go into the space again, okay, I put his biceps. Now the bicep can need, cannot put back to the greenoid. You need to put the bicep in the proximal humerus, okay, and then fix the bicep with the anchors, okay, like that. So now the patient has bicep but um, has a severe injury, both bicep and also the labrum. This is my friend. He's my friend um, many years ago, I think 20 years ago, when I was med medical student, more than 20. And, at, and he come back to see me again. Oh, my friend, I miss you for a long time. So when my old friend come back, he should have some problem. <laughs> okay. So he go bent press, and he had the severe subscapularis tear, you see? His subscapularis is torn, this is called belly off sign, and this arm cannot live up. This patient have the severe subscapularis tear. Okay, so I need to go in. I, he has a ton of subscapularis severe tear. Okay, we go in. We put the arthroscope. Okay, this is our technique published in Arthroscopy mm -hmm. Journal. Okay, and we fix. This is another patient. The same. They have the. Supraspinatus and the subscapularis tear. Okay, this is the tendon that's torn. Okay, so we fix the tendon back to the tuberosity. Okay, like that, repair. See, it's severe tear, and fix it back to the bone. Okay, so now the tuberos, the tendon was reduced back to the bone. Okay. Good. And a post op MRI the tendon heal nicely. This another patient have also the same bent press injury. Will you stop now? Not yet. But you have to be careful, not too heavy, okay? Otherwise you have the this injury. So this patient has the injury. This is a trauma. So, so yeah. oh. This is a very serious injury because the force is a lot. Another patient, he, this this guy, he uh, mountain bike accident. After accident, he cannot lift up. 
is a function of the supraspinatus, right? So this patient have the supraspinatus tear. From MI, you found that the tendon is torn and retracted. So we need to go in and fit this supraspinatus back. Okay, using these slide alligators. Okay, put it on. Cast the bite. Okay, you have the suture here. Okay, suture retriever. Get my D F lab. Okay. Good. Another injury very common is the A C joint. Okay, A C joint dislocations. Very common in um, yeah, bicycle, bicycle. I think this is very common. When you falling down, you see this guy, <laughs> falling down. The falling from the um, uh, bicycle always go to the top of the shoulder because they didn't want to hit the head they go the shoulder down so the force will be pushed on your acromion and the ac joint this is also common in the this kind of injury falling down on the top of the shoulder okay and this is the dislocation okay you see this dislocation of the ac joint okay so that's many ways to treat this kind of injury I will skip, okay? I will show you the um, importance of the of the ligament. So this is the AC joint, okay? The supra AC ligament. If you cut this supra AC ligament, this is in cadavers, you see that the clavicle can move. See? So this joint, AC joint was stabilized by the AC ligament and the CC ligament. You remember CC colococavicular, AC is acromiocavicular. Okay. Okay. And this is our technique. There's some controversy in the AC dislocation. Okay. And I show you. Um, okay, our technique. So. Nowadays, this is another AC dislocation. X-ray will be like this. The clavicle will be at the same position, but the scapula. You see clavicle? The clavicle is not floating up. The clavicle is in the same position, but the whole scapula dropping down. You see? This scapula dropping down, but the clavicle is in the same position. So you just fix it. It's not easy to, to fix this kind of this this location. It's quite controversy. This is one of the very controversy point in orthopedics. There's over hundred techniques to fix this. But nowadays there's no gold standard. It's still very controversy. So we published this article. I think this should be this may be this may be the standard treatment in the future. I'm not sure. But I found that I change the techniques, many, many techniques, and finally I stop with this technique. We call the arthroscopic uh, reconstruction of the AC and CC. So this patient have this location, this is clavicle. Okay, then we put the camera inside the joint. Okay, we put two holes. Okay, then we go to the, this patient also have the torn of the labrum. Okay, we fix the clavicle with the graft we using the, using the graft from say metaninosis hamstring okay make two holes here and stabilize with this graft okay then you fix the clavicle to the coracoid then i make another hose at the acromion put this ligament into the acromion and then you fix this back okay so you do both ac ligament and cc ligament okay this is CC, uh, and then we stabilize. Okay, fix that back. Okay, and fix. Good, and this is post up. And now the shoulder was reduced. This is six months, okay? The clavicle, the acromion is in the same line, okay? So we are collecting this data. So, going to finish this table, this location. Do you remember this, ladies? Oh, she, she got the gold medal Olympic. Who is she? 
This is one year before she got the formula. She has to go this location. Yeah, this is one year before she got the Olympic gold medal. She's too tired. You didn't remember? <laughs> it's too long for you. Yeah, this is the I think the gold, the first gold medal of Thailand. Okay, one year before that, just dislocation of the elbow. Okay, and she was trained as a well. Okay, and she's very strong. She tried the best to do physical therapy, and she got the gold medal. So this is the elbow dislocation. The way to reduce that, you fix the proximal part. After you see that the patient, you try to pull. At the same time, you push. Okay? Push and pull. Okay, like that. You see this dimple? Click. Okay, it's go back. Okay? So this is the way to reduce the elbow dislocation. And the other way to do that gurney, is to uh, draw on the patient. Okay? Uh, and your finger on the olecranon. And uh, you're pushing okay, down like a non-lacranon and simultaneously and pulling down the forearm. And okay? Once you uh, feel that pop, then you maintain the, the elbow and uh, flexion. Okay, was reduced. Okay. And after the reduction, you need to check the x-ray. So this patient, after the reduction, there's still some gap like this. Okay. So that means there's something torn. The shoulder is still subluxed. So this patient, we need to go in because she has torn of the collateral ligament. We need to fix the collateral ligament with suture anchor and repair it. Okay. Good. Repair the LC out of the elbow and she's good now. And this patient, she is a national judo. See, she has pain at the middle side. She has repetitive injury because you play judo, right? You need to throw this way. So you need to focus. So this is a repetitive focus injury. So she has pain on the medial collateral ligament. So this is a big story for you, I think. Okay, last one. She has a judo prayer also. She has torn, completely torn of the medial collateral ligament. See, this is walker straight test. Same like you do in the knee, okay? Chronic injury of the lateral epicondyle tennis elbow. You have pain at the lateral epicondyle, okay? You need to stretch, okay? Stretching exercise, okay? Uh, finally, if it fail, we do the open or arthroscopic surgery of the tennis elbow, okay? The problem is at the insertion of the uh, extensor carpi lateralis brevis, that is the, some cannulation tissues or degenerative tissue in the tendons. You take this out and make a stimulation by dealing and then repair it back. Okay? We call this the tennis elbow. Okay? And then you repair it back. Or you can do arthroscopic release of the ECRB. Okay? We call the tennis elbow release. Coffer elbow is happen on the middle side. Okay, you don't have to remove everything. It's a very big story for you. But I recommend you to read about the ACL, very common, anterior dislocation of the shoulder and posterior dislocation of the hip. Okay, this is very common that you need to practice. But this this kind of things you can learn when you are a fifth year or sixth year medical student. You can learn from the this web also, this uh, YouTube channel. Okay, you go to Ban Cha Chun Chu Chit. Okay, when you click, you can see the interactive learning for medical student. Okay, you click in, you have all the tests and also uh, this lecture. Okay, inside. You have any problem, you can email me, you can lie me. Okay, my ID is bansha.tu or YouTube channel. Okay.